Hi guys, this is Super Warrior. If you aren't subscribed to the channel, please do. Today I am going to explain the entire history of Mario Kart again. This is a remake of my Mario Kart 30th anniversary special and also serves as my 40 subscriber special. Even though I already have 47 subscribers, this video is not made to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Mario Kart, as that has already passed. Anyway, without further ado, I present the full history of the Mario Kart franchise. It all started in 1990 with the launch of the Super Family Computer. Initially, only two games were available, Super Mario World, the next installment of the Super Mario franchise and F-Zero, a newly created racing game. A year later in 1991, the Super Famicom was released in North America as the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The console was released alongside Super Mario World and F-Zero. But unlike its Japanese counterpart, the Super Nintendo also launched alongside Pilot Wings, Gradius 3, and SimCity. F-Zero became a success, prompting Nintendo to create multiple sequels on subsequent consoles. Despite the success, not everything went according to plan. One of Nintendo's ideas for F-Zero was to make a sequel that included multiplayer functionality. Unfortunately, there were some unforeseen obstacles in the development of the game. The developers quickly learned that making a multiplayer F-Zero was next to impossible. The tracks were too massive to display two players simultaneously. The race tracks would need to be downsized from 100 screens to a measly 16. Even with the race tracks downsized it would still be impossible to illustrate the high speeds F-Zero is known for. Another problem was that F-Zero's futuristic vehicles would not work on such a small map, but maybe another type of vehicle could. Their first idea was to use ordinary cars and have players zip around in an amusement park. Eventually, the developers decided to go with go-karts. It was a good choice since, at the time, there weren't very many kart racing games. After failing to get more acquainted with go-karts by reading books, a senior illustrator and animator suggested that the team should actually go to an amusement park and ride around in real go-karts. At first Super Mario creator, Shigeru Miyamoto rejected the idea, though he eventually approved of the idea. The team then rode around in go-karts for a day at the Naminozato amusement park. After getting acquainted with go-karts, the team got to work on developing the game. At first, the drivers were generic racers and overalls, but the developers then decided that it would be boring to have generic racers. They needed characters that would be easier to distinguish from each other. The developers then got the idea to include Mario characters. Finally, after trial and error, the game was released on the Super Family Computer in Japan on August 27, 1992 as Super Mario Kart. The game was later released in North America for the Super Nintendo on September 1st. 1992. Then British gamers were able to get their hands on the game in October of 1992. Super Mario Kart ended up becoming a huge success and the game was released in the rest of Europe the following year. The Super Nintendo was also a success selling 49,100,000 units worldwide. With the surprising success of Super Mario Kart, Nintendo quickly got to work on another Mario Kart game. In 1995, Nintendo launched its next console, the Virtual Boy. At the time Nintendo was still another console, the Ultra 64. Nintendo quickly worked on a Mario Kart game for the system. Unfortunately, the Virtual Boy turned out to be a huge failure for the company selling only 770,000 units in a year. The planned Mario Kart game titled VB Mario Kart was quickly cancelled. This wasn't the end of Mario Kart however. Later in 1996, Nintendo launched the Ultra 64, which had its name changed to Nintendo 64 before launch. The console launched with multiple games one of which was Mario Kart 64 which was originally called Super Mario Kart R. The one notable difference is that Super Mario Kart R included Kamek instead of Donkey Kong. While Kamek was ultimately cut from Mario Kart 64, he would later be added to Mario Kart Tour. Unlike the Virtual Boy, the Nintendo 64 was another huge success. Mario Kart 64 likewise was also successful. The game would go on to define the Mario Kart franchise moving forward. Mario Kart 64 was also the first game to introduce every Mario Kart expert's worst nightmare, the spiny shell, also known as the blue shell. 
After the success of the Nintendo 64, Nintendo got to work on a successor for the successful Game Boy Color. They also got to work on a Mario Kart game for the system. The handheld called the Game Boy Advance was then launched in 2001. Nintendo then came out with Mario Kart. Super Circuit for said handheld. Both the handheld and the Mario Kart game on the system were a success. Mario Kart Super Circuit would forever go down in history as the first portable Mario Kart game. It combined the mechanics of both Super Mario Kart and Mario Kart 64. In August of that year, Nintendo announced at Space World that a new Mario Kart was in the works for their upcoming console. The Nintendo GameCube. The GameCube was released in Japan on September 14, 2001, and on November 18 in North America. Later in 2003, one year after the European and Australian releases of the GameCube, Mario Kart Double Dash was released for the GameCube. While the GameCube wasn't as fondly received, it still did well. Mario Kart Double Dash, on the other hand, was another success for Nintendo. It had the unique mechanic of having two players race in one kart. I would like to see this return as a game mode in the next Mario Kart game. In December of that year, Mario Kart 64 was released in China under the IK brand. In 2004, the same year Nintendo released the Nintendo DS, game developer Denary's Entertainment Software created a demo for a game called Mario Kart XXL. It was originally an on-Mario demo known as our 3D demo. The two music tracks in Mario Kart XXL were from the German-exclusive PlayStation game Rehen Kart which was also developed by Denerys. The title theme was a rendition of the menu theme of Rehen Kart, and the race theme was a rendition of the Canyon theme. Mario Kart XXL would have been the second Mario Kart game on the Game Boy Advance if it had not been cancelled. While they didn't end up releasing Mario Kart XXL, Denerys would go on to make another racing game known as Crazy Frag Racer. Then in 2005, Nintendo brought Mario Kart to the arcades with the release of Mario Kart Arcade GP. This game runs on a modified version of the game engine used for Mario Kart Double Dash. This was the first Mario Kart game to feature non-Mario characters as drivers. The guest characters were Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, and Blinky. This was also the first Mario Kart game to be developed by Namco, who later merged with Bandai and became Bandai Namco. Bandai Namco thankfully got a license to continue making the game. This game also introduced a ton of new items, the notable being the Thunder Cloud. Later that year, Mario Kart DS was released for the Nintendo DS, like Mario Kart Arcade GP. Mario Kart DS also had a guest character. In this case, it was Rob the Robot. Keep in mind this was three years before his debut into the Super Smash Bros. franchise. Mario Kart DS was the first Mario Kart game to include online multiplayer, something a lot of us take for granted nowadays. Their online multiplayer system was called DS Download Play. This game was also technically Shy Guy's debut. You see, if you didn't own a copy of Mario Kart DS and you had a single card DS Download Play, you could only play as different colored Shy Guys and Shy Guy wasn't even on the character roster. Genius, huh? Two years later Nintendo would release another Mario Kart Arcade title called Mario Kart Arcade GP2. It wasn't much different from the first game. New characters included Waluigi and Bizarrely Mamchi from the Tamagotchi series. They also added a commentator voiced by American actor Justin Barty. I hope he shows up in the cast for the next Mario Kart game. The following year, Nintendo would release the Melee of Mario Kart. Mario Kart Wii. This game is how many people were introduced to the Mario Kart franchise. Not only that, but this was also the debut of the unofficial mascot of Mario Kart, Funky Kong. The game also helped Rosalina become a mainstay in the Super Mario franchise. Sadly, Rosalina wouldn't have a Luma racing with her in subsequent entries in the Mario Kart franchise. A few years later, Nintendo would release one of the most forgettable Mario Kart games, Mario Kart 7. The game was released for the Nintendo 3DS. The game was developed by Metroid developer Retro Studios. Despite being forgettable, the roster is pretty notable. The roster's newcomers were Metal Mario, Lakitu, Wiggler, and Honey Queen. Sadly, 
There is no Waluigi. It still boggles the minds of Waluigi fans such as myself. This game was also the first game to have tracks with gliding and underwater sections. It was also the first Mario Kart game to have card customization and to use the Nintendo Network service. Then a couple of years later in 2013, Mario Kart would get a third arcade title called Mario Kart Arcade GPDX. Unlike Mario Kart Arcade GP2, this game had quite a few differences from the first game. For one GPDX uses a different gaming engine. It also added the gilding and underwater mechanics from Mario Kart 7. M's Pac-Man and Mamchi were replaced with Don Chan from the Taiko no Tatsujin series. This was the first Mario Kart game to have DLC. The DLC included new characters which were Rosalina, Metal Mario, Baby Mario and Baby Peach. The Japanese version also included Daisy, Laketu, and King Boo. The Japanese version also included skins which were Gold Mario, Blue Toad, Fire Mario, Ice Luigi, Red Yoshi, Black Yoshi, Night Don Chan, Strawberry Don Chan and Dry Bowser. Then the following year Nintendo would release their next title Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U this game. Well good for the part, had a few huge issues. For one the roster was and still is the most abysmal roster in Mario Kart history. At least Mario Kart 7 only had one disappointing inclusion. The roster for Mario Kart 8 has too many clone characters and not enough fan favorites. Mario Kart 8 also got DLC, which added to Nuka Mario, Cat Peach, and Link. Another issue is the battle mode. It wasn't even a true battle mode. It is like they took race tracks, made some small edits and called it good. That is pretty aggravating. Anyway, moving on. A few years later in 2017, Nintendo released their newest console, the Nintendo Switch. For this console, Nintendo did something different. They decided to port Mario Kart 8 to the system under the title Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe fixed all of the major problems Mario Kart 8 had. For one Nintendo gave Mario Kart 8 Deluxe an actual battle mode instead of the weird one that the original Mario Kart 8 had. Secondly they added Bowser Jr., King Boo, Dry Bowser, Gold Mario, and the Inklings from Splatoon. This fixed the roster at least a little bit. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was another success for Nintendo and is still selling well to this day. Later that year, Mario Kart went to virtual reality with Mario Kart Arcade GP VR. There is not much to say about this game other than it is more of an attraction than a game. This game is so rare to come across that fellow YouTuber Demich hasn't even played it. Anyway, moving on then on January 31st, 2018 Nintendo fans were in for a surprise when Nintendo announced that they were making a Mario Kart game for mobile devices called Mario Kart Tour. After a bunch of betas, Mario Kart Tour was released on September 25, 2019. Mario Kart Tour was developed by Bandai Namco and Dina Cole. Limited. The game turned out to be abysmal at launch. They didn't even add multiplayer until March 2, 2020. Thankfully most of the problems the game had at launch have since been fixed. The biggest problem was the loot boxes which were removed on October 5, 2022. Anyway, moving on. Then in 2020 Nintendo released Mario Kart Live Home Circuit for the Nintendo Switch. The game was developed by Beelan Studios a new company made by the founders of Skylanders developer Vicarious Visions. This game is really much of a game. It is pretty much glorified RC cars. Only Mario and Luigi are playable in this game. To make up for this, they gave Mario and Luigi unlockable costumes. In single player you race the Kooplings and Bowser Jr., Peach, Toad, and Yoshi are only playable in relay mode. In January of 2022, Nintendo surprised fans by announcing that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was getting DLC in the form of the Booster Course Pass. The DLC will be released in six waves by the end of 2023. Wave 1 was released on March 18, 2023. Wave 2 released on August 4, 2022. Wave 3 released on December 7, 2022. And Wave 4 released on March 9, 
2023. The DLC also added other content. Wave 3 added custom items and Wave 4 added Birdo to the character roster. In conclusion Mario Kart has over 30 years of history and will hopefully be around for another 30. As for the future of Mario Kart, Mario Kart Tour's 4th anniversary will be coming up in September. We only have two more waves of the booster course pass left. More news on Wave 5 should be cropping up soon. We can expect five more characters to be added to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's roster. We also possibly get new items and battle courses. That is all for this video. Happy July 4th to all of my American viewers. Keep on living warriors. Bye.